Now let's move on to our next talk. which is uh, by dr anita mandava she is senior consultant radiologist at department of radiology bia cancer hospital and research institute hyderabad telangana and uh, ma'am has several publications to her credit she has a professional experience of over 20 years and her key areas of interest are pertaining to onco imaging today's topic is a little unusual and uncommon topic uh, but it is very very important because as people sitting in cancer hospital we know that uh, the patient's life span is limited in most of the cases because we are working in tertiary care cancer hospitals and whatever little amount of uh, life they have got to live if they are having a fistula they are going to have a very bad quality of life so detection of fistula is extremely important in malignancies so today we'll just quickly look at the clinical background of this Mm, fistulas uh, most common etiology role of various imaging modalities and what are the goals of imaging so a fistula is defined as an abnormal communication between two epithelial surfaces and the earliest case was uh, reported in egyptian mummy in 1935 which was a vesicovaginal fistula and for a long time the cause of uh, fistula was prolonged obstructed labor with improved uh, lay uh, obstetric care that's no longer uh, a problem now the commonest cause is either inflammatory diseases or malignancies the commonest fistulas we see in our practice are vesicovaginal fistulas and rectovaginal fistulas in case of malignancies even uterine and cervical fistulas are not that uncommon so patients usually present to us with uh, symptoms of uh, either hematuria nematuria or pyuria or if uh, alimentary tract is involved they'll come with features of uh, fecal urea or diarrhea with incontinence or foul swelling vaginal discharge and recurrent utis this is one of the most common presentations and a non specific uh, finding but very important is weight loss so patients with these symptoms if they come to us for evaluation for something as we need to look for a fistula so the as i said the common causes of pelvic fistulas benign etiologies are inflammatory bowel diseases infections and surgeries but most common cause is post radiation or i directly malignancies cervical colorectal ovarian and bladder neoplasms can themselves present with fistulas or post operative cases again they can have in acute phase or chronic phase they can have fistulation uh, at the site of anastomosis or due to the dehiscence or due to the recurrence so there are several uh, investigations for uh, evaluation of fistulas so historically lot of uh, ibus or cystographies were used for diagnosis histographies vaginographies for uh, uterine and vaginal fistula evaluation fistulographies for fistulas with external cutaneous openings and barium meal follow through or barium enemas which we still do in few cases but all of these fistula investigations are, have one severe limitation that is you cannot visualize any fistula beyond that system which is um, which it is examining the second one is lack of mural and extraluminal visualization for that you need cross sectional imaging so here we have a barium enema in a known case of carcinoma of rectum we are seeing barium uh, inside the large bubble rectum and cecum and something outside of the contour of uh, rectum so in an oblique view we can very see clearly see the communication between the rectum and vagina this is a clear cut case of recto vaginal fistula but now you just don't know what is happening outside of the bubble lumen or what is happening to the bubble lumen itself so for that we definitely need a cross sectional imaging so coming to the next imaging commonest imaging modality is ultrasound and as far as uh, fistulas are concerned please do not take ultrasound lightly because we i'm going to show what we can do with ultrasound in next few slides so ultrasound uh, is very important because it is a very easily available inexpensive uh, imaging modality 
though it has got its own limitations in the evaluation of fistulas because small fistulas of less than 1 cm 1 cm can be very easily missed and in post operative and post rt cases again the anatomy is totally disturbed so in those cases also we may miss fistulas and most importantly we don't have a good urinary bladder volume when whenever there is a suspected uh, Mm, vesicular fistulas where they have continuous urinary leakage or involving catheters in those cases again we don't have a good uh, field of view so in these cases suboptimal studies in these cases also it is very difficult to visualize a uh, fistula through usg but i'll show you some clues today where you can see when you see that you will be able to pick up a fistula so what are the signs of uh, fistula on ultrasound the first one is sonographic air contrast sign the second one is sonographic flat tire sign and the third one is presence of ring down artifacts we we'll look at each of these signs very clearly in the next few slides other than this on ultrasound we should be able to pick up uh, focal wall thickening of the organs involved or adherence of uh, organs to each other in pelvis it will again be indicative of a uh, suspicion clue to a fist underlying fistula if whenever we see fluid Uh, adjacent to either a mass or in the caldi sac uh, in the pod again uh, we need to rule out a fistula and whenever there is loss of neural stratification in the adjacent bubble wall that also may point out to a fistula other than this we can see bubble wall uh, omental thickening or uh, abdominal lymphadenopathy ascites or any secondary uh, metastatic uh, lesions in the liver or something again we need to think of a malignancy and a malignant fistula so the first one which i'm going to show you is the air contrast sign uh so this air contrast give me a second i'm going to uh, okay this is the air contrast sign so what is air contrast sign air contrast sign is a continuous hyperechoic fistulous tract within a hypoechoic neoplastic mass extending between the organs here is a case of uh, carcinoma of uh, cervix uh, which is invading the rectum you see a partially distended urinary bladder uh, so behind it is the uterus and the cervix and behind it is the rectum once uh, you see this you see a continuous uh, air tract going from the rectum into the vagina so this appearance when you are able to see this continuous air tract between the two adjacent organs which are adherent to each other it will point out to a uh, air contrast sign which is the earliest clue of fistula so this is a case of rectovaginal fistula so you are able to see this rectovaginal fistula with air contrast sign very very clearly on ultrasound so this same recto air contrast sign on a ultrasound image you are able to see the air going from the rectum into the vagina behind the urinary bladder this is an ultrasound image and this is the recto vaginal fistula the same fistula i'm going to demonstrate on ct in the same patient where you can see the rectal contrast passing into the vagina just behind the urinary bladder so this exactly what you are seeing on ct are able to see on even ultrasound so this is a air contrast sign showing a recto vaginal fistula the second sign is a flat tire sign whenever you see air passing into the urinary bladder in a known case of malignancy you have to think of a vesical fistula so this is very clearly demonstrating the passage of air into the uh, urinary bladder from the rectal mass this is a case of uh, recto vesical fistula so recto whenever you have a vesical fistula you need to look for this flat tire sign the third is ring down artifacts so what are ring down artifacts some gas containing fistulas they sh show irregular tracks of uh, discontinuous hyperechoic foci with posterior ring down artifacts so these are ring down artifacts when you are seeing ring down artifacts between two adjacent masses uh, with uh, very uh, when the fat planes between them are not seen the cleavage planes are not clearly seen then you should suspect a fistula so these are the ring down artifacts this is a partially distended urinary bladder and uterus here is the vagina and posterior to them is the rectum the same image we are confirming a rectovaginal fistula over with ct 
So whenever you see again bring down artifacts, you need to look, uh, think of a fistula. So this is a case of rectovaginal fistula showing ring down artifacts. Few other cases on ultrasound and corresponding CT images I will show you. Again, uh, air contrast sign between rectum and vagina. The same thing confirmed on CT. You are seeing a very nice um, rectal contrast within the vagina, which it is not supposed to be in vagina. You are seeing a beautiful communication between rectum and uh, uh, posterior wall of the vagina, but the same thing you are able to see even on ultrasound. So this is a case of uh, rectovaginal fistula. Similarly, here we have a case of uh, carcinoma of cervix, large mass recurrence and a communication air contrast sign between the rectum and the uterus. So this is a recto uterine fistula. You can as well see the bowel contrast in the bowel, oral contrast in the bowel loops, even into the rectum. And this contrast, you are seeing it in the lower part of uh, cervix and vagina and in the uterus. So this is a case of uh, rectovaginal fistula. Even complex uh, fistulas, multiple fistulas can be appreciated in ultrasound if you know what to look for. Here is a case of, uh, again, carcinoma of cervix, a large irregular mass invading the rectum and adjacent bowel. Uh, so here you can see multiple air foci within this mass and in the rectum, in the vagina and even in the bowel loop, in the air focus in the uh, adjacent ileal loop. So the same thing which we can see on ultrasound. So you are having a rectal vaginal fistula between the vagina and rectum and contrast which is seen as air foci on ultrasound and contrast is seen in a mass as this contrast is coming from the bowel. So this is the bowel loop, ileal loop, which is communicating with the uh, recto, rectum and the cervical mass. So here you have an enterovaginal fistula as well as a rectovaginal fistula together, which you can in fact appreciate on uh, ultrasound too, when you compare both the images. So next is the CT and MR. When coming to the cross-sectional imaging, uh, the biggest advantage of cross-sectional uh, imaging is uh, we are able to localize the fistula in three dimensions and identify the underlying etiology. Uh, so the most important thing is this identification of the location and uh, the adjacent uh, tissue will determine the surgical procedure and the approach. So when we are evaluating uh, on CT or MRI, we need to see in all three planes because in sagittal planes and profile planes, we see vesicovaginal and rectovaginal fistulas very well. And we can even um, profile the fistula in, at, uh, on the level of or give the level of the fistula so that appropriate uh, surgical approach can be taken. Whether it is amenable to open surgery or a lab surgery, they can decide once we give them a proper level. And uh, ureteric and introvesicle or colovesicle fistula, whenever there are ureters or bowel are involved, we always need to evaluate fistulas in coronal sections. So what are the advantages? CT is the, the most important investigative modality for the evaluation of fistula because uh, whenever we do a contrast-enhanced CT with uh, multiplanar reconstruction, the diagnosis... Uh, Diagnostic accuracy is almost 100% for the evaluation of fistula. So unless there is contraindication for CT, this is the imaging modality of choice. Except for few uh, indications for MR, otherwise I would generally say we prefer CT to uh, investigate any pelvic fistula. So what are the imaging clues on CT? So when do you suspect that there is a fistula? You pay, do the routine uh, CT of abdomen. And when do you suspect? Whenever there is air in urinary bladder, if there is no prior instrumentation or history of infection, a air focus in urinary bladder directly points out to a fistulation process. Second is focal wall thickening. Whenever there is adjacent organ or the organ involved, when there is wall thickening, we should think of there is a malignant process going on and possibility of fistula. Third is when the organs are adherent to each other, a large soft tissue mass is adherent to the organs. Again, this 
presence of a large adherent soft tissue mass gives a clue to the presence of fistula the fourth one is the most important one whenever we see presence of contrast in inappropriate location this is a rectal copation with the rectal contrast where it contrast is supposed to be in the rectum but now you are seeing the contrast everywhere in the vagina in the cervix and coming out through the vaginal and perineal soft tissue so this is contrast in inappropriate location it directly indicates the presence of a fistula so i am sure going to show you a few cases this is a, a rectal mass and you are seeing contrast uh, uh, abnormal communication with contrast between the two organs or here where you can see directly sorry this is a cervical mass uh, this is a uh, vesico vaginal fistula between the fistula between vagina and the urinary bladder so you can see the fistula very well especially all vaginal fistulas uh, have to be evaluated in sagittal plane so once you see uh, inwelling catheter bulb is there uh, once you see a com uh, communication between these two vagina and uh, posterior wall of the urinary bladder directly on uh, your sagittal plane there is no doubt about the presence of fistula even in plain ct this is a case of a 52 year old uh, female uh, with a mal uh, rectal malignancy so directly we are able to see air in the rectum and a linear uh, tract going directly into the vagina so this shows the presence of rectovaginal fistula on a direct plain ct itself so once you do a, a rectal contrast you give it you can clearly demonstrate the uh, fistulous tract between the rectum and vagina and the same tract you are able to see very well in sagittal planes so this is a rectovaginal fistula so coming to the rectovaginal fistula so, uh, the biggest advantage of cross sectional imaging is to uh, locate the level of uh, fistula so the level of posterior vaginal wall involvement categorizes rectovaginal fistulas into three types this is very important to know the etiology of the fistula probable etiology of the fistula and for the approach so low rectovaginal fistulas are usually located at the lower one third of the vagina they are most commonly due to vulval uh, obstetric uh, causes or some vulval or vaginal malignancies so mid rectovaginal fistulas they communicate directly through the rectovaginal septum and they characteristically occur between the posterior fornix of the vagina and middle one third of the rectum these are the most important fistulas for us because all radiation induced fistulas are most commonly found at the mid rectovaginal are mostly mid rectovaginal fistulas so rt fistulas which are the most common ones we see in practice we need to look at this whenever we suspect we need need to look at this location and high rectovaginal fistulas are seen between the sigmoid colon or rectum uh, and the peritoneal portion of vagina these com are commonly due to uh, pelvic procedures neoplasms or inflammatory diseases so i'm going to show few examples uh, so second thing is whenever you see a fistula in a malignant case or a post radiation therapy case you once you find a fistula you need to go back and look for another one because post radiation fistulas are always most of the time multiple and large so this is a case of uh, 62 year old female in of carcinoma urinary bladder post chemo and rt now you are seeing uh, both uh, sagittal sections and axial sections so you see air in the urinary bladder so this itself points out to uh, probable fistula and then contrast you are seeing between the dome of the urinary bladder and the sigmoid colon high up so this is a vesico vesico sorry this is a uh, sigmoid colo vesical fistula and this is a you are seeing from the dome of the uh, uh, urinary bladder and the sigmoid colon this is a sigmo vesical uh, fistula so this is a colo vesical fistula and vesico vaginal fistula so you are seeing two fistulas in a single patient so multiple fistulas are more common in uh, post rt cases so another case of carcinoma cervix uh, present post 
radiation therapy there is no recurrence what you are seeing here is the contrast in the bowel loop and you are seeing a bowel loop which is interposed between the uterus and the urinary bladder because there gave a, a large um, four field uh, radiation without contouring the this was a conventional radiation field without contouring uh, the radiation field they had given radiation and box field technique so the bowel loop was also involved within the got in included within the radiation field after four years patient developed double fistulas you are able to see the bubble loop ileal loop between the urinary bladder and uterus so here it is communicating with the cervix as well as the urinary bladder so you have double fistulas in this case again air in the urinary bladder which is a clue so what you have here is the communication between the bubble loop and the urinary bladder enterovesical fistula and the communication between the bubble loop and the cervix so this is a ectero cervical fistula double fistulas as i said most commonly you see it post rt fistulas another case with multiple fistulas here you have uh, a vesico vaginal fistula between the vagina and the urinary bladder at a lower level you are seeing a communication between the vagina as well as the rectum so double fistulas vesico vaginal and recto vaginal fistulas in the same patient another case uh, you are seeing at lower ends of uh, both ureters carcinoma cervix again carcinoma cervix patient both uh, lower ureters are communicating abnormally and uh, contrast is seen on both sides of the uh, vagina so this is a case of uh, as i said this is a case of uh, bilateral fistulas bilateral ureter vaginal fistulas and to evaluate uh, ureteric fistulas uh, coronal views are better so bilateral ureter vaginal fistulas again in this you are able to see the indirect clue air within the urinary bladder so another case of uh, a complex mass large mass invading the low, uh, carcinoma cervix invading both the uh, and even the bubble is involved in this you have a entero vesical fistula between the uh, collapsed urinary bladder you are able to see only the police bulb over here so this is the communication between the bubble loop and the urinary bladder and another vesico vaginal fistula posteriorly the same urinary bladder is communicating with the vagina so entero vesical and vesico vaginal fistulas in the same case another case where you are able to see the uterus uh, is having the contrast this is not the bubble loop this is the uterus so you are able to see the contrast in the bubble loops and contrast in the uterus so here uterus is communicating at two points with the bubble loops one is with the sigmoid colon where you are able to see the sigmoid colon having a communication directly abnormal communication with the uterus this is a colouterine fistula on the left side and uh, on the right side we have another communication between the ileal loop and the uterus so here is a entero uterine fistula so these are abnormal unusual fistulas whenever you see this kind of uh, fistulas you can be very sure that the underlying pathology is malignancy so coming to the pet pet is recommended only for the staging of malignancy but it has a poor anatomical resolution but few times accidentally when they do for staging we can discover a fistula itself here it is showing a nice uh, rectovesical fistula sorry rectovaginal fistula so next is mr mr is not advised for all because most of the patients they won't be able to hold the contrast for a long time and they are associated with artifacts mm. and the imaging protocols are long but in few cases mr is advised so on mr most of the fluid filled tracts are hyperintense and all the gas filled tracts are hypointense and whenever we see uh, contrast enhancement of the fistula uh, wall of the fistula we need to be uh, suspecting a neoplastic process or inflammatory or etiology chronic uh, fibrous tracts will never enhance and whenever there is a contrast enhancement of the fistula tract it is also highly suggestive of active disease so uh, this t1 weighted contrast and t2 weighted images they differentiate uh, uh, soft tissue masses especially if there is a soft tissue mass with fistula 
in radiation induced fibrosis it doesn't enhance if there is a residual recurrent malignancy it will enhance so there mr is important and even diffusion weighted mr also is advantageous a few studies have shown that it is advantageous for fistulous evaluation and the disadvantage small fistulas which are iso intense on t2 weighted images may be totally missed out the mr leading to false negative results so in future uh, newer uh, mr sequences with short imaging times sometimes they can differentiate the between viable and non viable tissues they could be useful in the but it needs lot of uh, further studies so a few mr cases this is a case of a large uh, carcinoma cervix mass directly invading the urinary bladder this is pre treatment uh, and there is a fistulous communication between the urinary bladder and the cervix so vesico vaginal fistula another case uh, of uh, vesico vaginal fistula fluid filled uh, fistula we can see and complex fistula again you are able to see the fluid and contrast in a different case we are seeing two fistulas over here recto vaginal and vesico vaginal fistulas so even in males they are not very uncommon carcinoma of prostate this is a patient of carcinoma of prostate post radiation he has developed a fistula over here so this is a recto vesical fistula post rt case so coming to the management of fistulas i have a couple of slides left benign fistulas it's uh, always conservative approach and malignant fistulas mind you uh, it, they always always need a curative or a palliative surgical intervention because the diagnosis of fistula itself says that uh, in all fistulas it is t4 stage uh, mostly urinary bladder uterus cervix vagina they are all t4a and rectum is t4b so whenever you see a fistula the best curative option is an block tumor fistula resection but most of the patients won't be amicable for surgical resection so a large fistulas and active viable tumors uh, presence of these tumors they are not candidates for surgical repair and post rt uh, fistulas are again have high failure rates because of uh, ischemic and non viable surrounding tissues and poor healing so these cases these patients they always require some other autonomies so diversion procedures or palliative procedures so in summary what do we look for in imaging we look uh, to assess the location size number and pores of the fistula tract always uh, we need to assess adjacent areas and to rule out synchronous lesions and in malignant fistulas again we need to go back and restage the neoplasm and we should provide a pre surgical road map because whether the surgeon is going to go for a curative resection or only a palliative bypass surgery or whether organs have to be removed or still preserved and how do they approach whether laparoscopic or open and whenever you see a fistula whether is it an emergency procedure or whether it is elective or some elective procedure so all this for a surgeon we need to give the answers to all these patients so again in port rt uh, fistulas we need to describe the complete surrounding tissues so in conclusion a comprehensive report should contain all details of all the things which have been described in the previous slide and as i said ultrasound gives the earliest clue to the presence of fistulas and mdct is the gold standard uh, best imaging modality gold standard imaging modality for the diagnosis and mri in few situations especially when there are equivocal findings on ct or complex fistulas with the involvement of anorectal sphincter